guys, my name is Pratik Singh and in this video we're going to talk about multiple candlestick patterns. We're going to talk about what the patterns look like, the trend implication, the psychology. I'll even show some examples. And I think we should start with the engulfing pattern. But please make sure you've seen the previous video so you understand single candlesticks first because we're going to reference that video a little bit. And now let's start with the engulfing pattern. The engulfing pattern psychology is actually very similar to hammer but I won't give that away straight away. Let's talk about engulfing and maybe you can spot the differences or similarities between the psychology of both of these patterns. So since this is our first double candlestick or multiple candlestick patterns, it's obviously two candlesticks that are being played here. So the engulfing has two variations, right? The bullish and the bearish. So the previous trend like we discussed is down. You have a small body, it could be a large body as well, actually. Candle. And we can see that the next bar, the second bar, so this is bar number one, which is a red bar. The second bar engulfs the previous entire bar. Now, when we use the word engulf, right? The word engulf actually means covering the previous candle's body. So as you can see here that this body is actually completely engulfing the previous real body of the candle, which means that clearly the bulls are in control. Traditionally, you have to look at the open and close of day two. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's understand this. So over here, we can see that the open of candle two on day two is actually lower than the close of day one, right? So this is lower than this. We can also see that the close of day two is larger than the open of the previous day. This is what defines an engulfing. The open of day two is lower than the close of day one, and the close of day two is greater than the open of day one. Now let's look at the bearish engulfing. It's exactly the same, it just reverses a bit. So you need a previous bullish trend. And then you have a body here of the market going up. And this is expected, the bulls are in control. You get a slight maybe gap up opening and the bar actually engulfs the previous real body. And in this case, it also engulfs the previous wick and you get this. Now this is a bearish engulfing notice that the open of day two is greater than the close of day one, and the close of day two is greater than the open of day one. This means that the real body of day two has engulfed the previous day's real body. Technical analysts expect that the market will reverse or the trend will reverse from here. And the psychology is very similar to the hammer, like I said. So why am I saying that? Let's look at the bearish engulfing to understand this. The market is moving upwards, lots of buying pressure. The bulls are clearly in control. Day one, then a candle appears, which is also a bullish candle. Excellent. Now notice on day two, the market opens slightly gap up. And this is also a bullish sign mind you. Market goes up a little bit, but then completely covers or starts falling. The bears become in control, pushing markets down and they close below the open of the previous day. So even if this bar had actually closed somewhere here, it would still be en engulfing because it's engulfing the previous body. But in this case, we've drawn it in such a way that it's closing even below yesterday's lower wick. And that's completely fine. That's what makes this a powerful bear pattern that it's engulfing the previous day. The uptrend is now in question. So let's see an example of a bullish engulfing on the chart. So I have Reliance over here on the daily chart and we can see that the market was falling and you have the first red candle that I'm gonna spot here. Uh, this is candle number one in our multiple candle for bullish engulfing. Candle number two is this big green bar. So let's technically see whether the open and close criteria matched and did it actually engulf. So if you look at the open of day two, you can see that the open is 1,108.3, which is lower than the previous day's close, which is this day. 
that is about 1109.4 it's about 1 rupee lower close about and we can see that clearly the close is much higher than the open of the previous day therefore this is an engulfing and this is a reversal pattern in this case the market did reverse and the trend actually changed the beauty about these patterns right like i said before is not the intricacies and technicalities of um, the open and close and the ratios the beauty is that you can see that for the first time the bulls are in power in a downtrend that's what makes it so interesting so like i said before focus on the price action and psychology versus uh, the intricacies and names of the patterns so that's what a bullish engulfing looks like so in our bearish engulfing this time let's take an index as an example but we'll stick to the daily charts remember all of this is applicable to even higher time frames like weekly or monthly but we'll stick to daily so this is what a bearish engulfing looks like we need a prior uptrend we need the pattern and let's see if we can find it so this is nifty 50 it has a prior clear uptrend and i'll zoom in a bit notice this is day one and this is day two uh, i don't think we need to really look at the open or low and close we can clearly see that the open was higher than the previous day's close the close of day two was lower than the previous day's open and this is a very clear engulfing. Notice that the price action is very um, violent over here. The, the gap up was violent, the sell off was violent, and it even caused a three day um, rally before the market actually reversed and fell from there. So, this is uh, a bearish engulfing pattern on the Nifty 50. So, there are two ways to actually look at this from a trading perspective. As soon as day two closes, um, you have confirmation as an aggressive trader that this pattern's reversal is in order. Uh, a less aggressive approach is waiting for the high of day two to be crossed, where you have some confirmation and you can make a buying decision based on these two options. Uh, at what point does the, does the pattern fail is the next question. So if the market actually crosses the low of the second day, uh, that would be that this bullish engulfing pattern has failed. The same thing is true for the bearish engulfing pattern. Here, as soon as this candle closes, an aggressive trader would say, okay, I think the market will reverse now. A less aggressive trader would probably wait for the low of this to be crossed before making his selling decision. And if this person is shorting, then the high of this bar would be the point at which where this pattern fails and probably where your stop loss would be. There is another very famous pattern called the bullish and bearish harami. Yeah, that's really the pattern's name. And you can, f it's actually a variation of the engulfing. So if you're interested to learn that, please go to Varsity, check that post out. It has a lot of examples. And in the comment section, a lot of people have had discussions around the pattern. So please participate. You can learn and you can add something to the community as well. The next pattern is the piercing and dark cloud cover. It's actually very similar to the bullish and bearish engulfing with a slight difference. So the piercing pattern is in a downtrend. So I'll draw a down move. And what happens is as the market is moving down, right, um, you have another down bar, which is just expected is just another down day for a downtrend. So the bears are still in control. However, the next day, the market actually gaps down a bit. Now, this is actually a continuation of a bearish uh, feature because a gap down means there are yet more sellers in the market. But for candle number two, this candle actually moves up and closes at least 50% of the previous candle's real body. This means that the bulls came into control despite a gap down, which is a lot of selling pressure. So that means the bulls actually overpowered all of that supply and bid up the market, moved it up and closed at least 50% of the previous candles bar. It looks like it's piercing the previous candle, right? Because of that gap down. And that's why it's called a piercing pattern. So of course, if this close was any higher, maybe here, it would become an engulfing pattern. But notice the price action is very similar. In both cases, the market gap down and then bulls took control. And that's what you have to focus on. 
uh, the psychology of the market is that the bulls are suddenly now in control. This is also a reversal pattern, which means that traditional technical analysts would expect the trend to reverse towards the upside. Now, the exact opposite of the piercing is the dark cloud cover. Isn't a fun name, dark cloud? And you'll see why it's called the dark cloud cover. Um, you see the market will be moving upwards like this. And then in continuation, since the bulls are still in control, you'll see that there is an up move again. This is day one of our dark cloud cover. On the next day, the market gaps up a bit. And you see, this is actually a bullish sign because not only was the market in an uptrend, it's now gapping up. But for candle number two, things are a little different. The sellers take control, push market downwards, and at the end of the day, the market closes at least 50% of the previous day. And notice, it's just the piercing pattern inverted, and it seems like there are dark clouds over this glorious up move. Maybe that's why it's called the dark cloud cover. But anyway, don't get caught up in the names. The price action says that now the bears are in control, pushing markets down, and the expectation is that the trend is likely to reverse now. So let's see an example. I'm going to show you piercing and dark cloud cover. Actually, we found it in one single chart. So we have Havels here. We're looking at the daily chart. Remember, start with the previous trend. Confirm the pattern makes sense. Uh, and then we'll also talk about entry and exit and how you should see this as a trader. So you can see over here that clearly the market was moving upwards. It's an uptrend. We have a nice handsome looking blue bar that's that's here right now so i'm starting with dark cloud cover the next day we can see day two the open is greater than the previous day's close so we have that gap up but here it's a lot more evident in havels and then we closed at about the 50 percent mark showing that now the bears are in control and uh, of course the trend did reverse after that and we have a, a downtrend almost negating the entire uptrend uh, of Havels before that. So that's what a dark cloud cover is. Now let's look at the opposite, the piercing pattern. We can see that we have a piercing pattern right here at the end of that trend. So uh, let's go one by one. First, the prior trend is down, like we discussed here. The prior trend is down. We can see that we have a big, um, can I say handsome red bar falling? So that's this bar over here. As we can see, the bears are in control. For day two, the market opened. We have a gap down like we saw here. We have a gap down here. And actually the market continued to fall, which means the bears were still in control at that point for day two when the market opened. But at some point, the bulls took control, pushed the market upwards and closed around the 50% mark, creating the piercing pattern. And we can see over here that the market tried to go up but notice, this time, the pattern didn't work. Now, this should not come as a surprise to you. Patterns do fail, which is why we talk about at what point should you see an entry, at what point should you see an exit, etc. Over here, the markets went up and it continued to fall after that. So do patterns work all the time? Of course not. That's not something you should expect. And that's why we thought we should show you this example. So as a trader, what should your perspective be technically? Well, when you're looking at uh, the piercing pattern like we have over here, um, an aggressive trader would say, as soon as this bar closes here, the pattern is completed and he would probably base his buying decision somewhere there. A person who needs, who's a little less aggressive and needs some confirmation, he would wait for the second day's high to cross uh, and he would make a buying decision based on that. And then the second question is, at what point does the piercing pattern fail? You probably guessed this one. The low candle of either day one or day two, whichever is the lowest, in this case, it's day two. As soon as this low would break, we'd say that the pattern is no longer in effect and is now failed. Now, let's also apply the same thing on the dark cloud cover. So I'll just scroll back and we can see over here that we have day one here and day two. Um, a less aggressive trader would confirm that this pattern, dark cloud cover, is in effect as soon as the day would end and it would close. A person who is a little less aggressive and needs confirmation would probably take a selling decision 
on day two's low break, which would be the next day here. Um, and again, at what point do we say that this dark cloud cover has failed? If we cross the high of either of the two candles, in this example of Havels, it's the second day high. At that point, we would say that this pattern has failed. The next pattern we're going to talk about is slightly different than what we've discussed so far. It's actually the morning star and the evening star. And this is not a two candlestick pattern. It's a three candlestick pattern and it's a reversal pattern. So let's start with the morning star. Basically, this three pattern has an element of indecision as well. So we'll go back to our previous knowledge of what we discussed around spinning tops and doji. In fact, let me just draw this for you. We first need a prior trend, a downtrend for a morning star. So we have a downtrend like this. And then we have a down bar or a bearish bar over here. Now, just like all patterns we've discussed, especially in multiple uh, candle patterns, this bar just means that the previous trend is continuing. Bulls are in full control. No surprises, we're already in a downtrend. Now, the next day, something interesting happens. The market opens gap down. It goes down a bit, it goes up a bit and forms a doji. Now, while the market gap down, and that's a bearish thing, continuing the downtrend, the interesting thing here is we formed a doji. This could also be a spinning top. So it could also have a small real body here. But the point is that there is now indecision on candle number two. Now, obviously, this creates a little restlessness for the bears. They were probably expecting another bearish day, but that didn't happen. Instead, you have a spinning top or a doji on day two. Now, as we know, a doji means a sign of change or sideways. So we wait for the third candle to do its magic. In this case, the third candle opens and closes above the first day's open. That's very important. So we can see in this candlestick pattern that the third candle managed to close above the open of the first day. And that is what triggers this entire reversal. So on day one, you have a down move. On second day, you have an indecision day, which is a doji or a spinning top. And on day three, you have a bar which is completely negated day one, showing us or proving to us that the bulls are now in control. Like you know, this is a reversal pattern and we expect the markets to now reverse towards the upside. Guys, also it's important to note that even if this close is not really above the open of day one, it's still okay. The candles can be the same size or the close for day three can be around the open. The psychology behind the pattern is that the bulls are in control and that's the most important part of this. So now let's look at the exact opposite. That's the evening star. We'll just reverse this. So first we need an uptrend. The market's moving nice and up, lots of demand. And we can see that as expected, the market has one candle that has moved up. No surprises. The next day, however, is where some magic happens. Uh, there is a gap up. And you get this candle right here. This is again a doji or a spinning top. It could have a small real body, doesn't matter. It could be a doji. It means that on opening, the bulls were still in control. But something happened, they tripped. And the bears tried to push the market down, succeeded. And on this day, neither the bears nor the bulls actually won for that day. The open and close is very similar, proving there was indecision on day number two, just like our morning star. And on day number three, we get our confirmation. The market opens and actually closes below day one's open, uh, showing that now the bears are in control and we expect the market to move down because it's a reversal pattern. And that's what an evening star is. Now, let me show you some examples so we can see what it looks like in the real world. So this example we have is of Indusind Bank. It's a beautiful formation of the morning star. You'll see that the market was actually falling and we have a nice red bar. This is day number one. That's this one over here. This is day number one. Then you have day number two. Notice we have 
this is a very doji spinning top like formation it has a small narrow body a huge upper wick a small down wick which shows indecision you can see that brakes are being applied in this down slide on day 2 uh the next day the third day right here we can see a gap up from the previous day's close and the market actually closes near the first day's close and this is completely fine guys it shows that the bulls are in control so this example is particularly interesting because the third day's close is not more than the open but you can see that the price action is actually showing a reversal that the bulls are in control and in this case the market actually moved up and that's what a morning star looks like all right the second example we have is of the evening star and as you can see we have an uptrend now i want you to focus to the far right of the chart okay i have not revealed what happens after the evening star is formed we'll see it after we understand the pattern so you'll see day 1 this green bar is day 1 it's a nice green bar uh, it has a little upper and lower wick but that's fine we are not worried about that in this pattern the second day actually shows a doji it's also a gap up right so as we drew over here you have a gap up on day 2 The beautiful thing here is day 3. That's when you can see that day 2's indecision has converted into pessimism, into supply provided by the bears. You can see there was a gap down on day 3 and it closed below the uh, open of day 1 right here. And this obviously shows that now the bears are in control. And let's see what happened next, right? I'll just scroll ahead. You can see that there was a massive fall the next day and the trend uh actually reversed uh over the short term over the evening star pattern so now that we're done with all the candlestick patterns in single and multiple you would have noticed that the psychology behind market participants is more important than the names themselves there's also an interesting part of technical analysis that each bar that is created is part of a story that's unfolding that has an underlying layer of mass psychology which is what makes uh learning this super interesting because you can see that patterns like this form again and again in the future but apart from this uh, there's also other tools in the technical analysts arsenal and we're going to talk about that next we're going to delve deep and understand how support resistance works in the next video key takeaways from this video are 